Zila. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we're the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And I was looking over at Nicole. She didn't say anything, but she's here too. So, I'm Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And this is the Torah channel. And yes, we are doing the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. And we are going to continue on with doing the Torah like we have been doing. And we've been off a little bit because we've been at extremely rainy season here. And so we actually need to take an hour out during our day. And today is a special day. What is today, Shug? It is Shavuot. Shavuot. What is Shavuot? Shavuot is a feast. It is a uh, day that is set apart. It was 50 days after the first High Shabbat of... It's a hag. It's a hag, yeah. Feast. Okay, what does that mean? It means it's a feast. It means it's a day you should cook. You should be glad. It's kind of like a... A giant, it's like a giant Thanksgiving is what you should have. You know when people have their Thanksgiving meals on their pagan calendars? It's like that. We should have that, but today should be our Thanksgiving, right? Is it a scheduled day? It is absolutely scheduled. It is. We have our time. Do we have dates? Exact dates? It was the, from the first day and the 14th month, right, we had Passover. Then from there, we had. Yeah, the next day or that. The next that. day, we started the. Uh, Feast, of Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, and we had a big question in our house regarding how did we figure out the count on this. And so we went down the rabbit hole, and I believe that we have found where it is. Can anyone explain that? Nicole, you want to explain that to us? No, no she says. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, she's real shy. Everyone. Basically, how it went was, it talks about in Leviticus 23 that there should be a Shabbat that should be kept apart, right? And a lot of people were... Asking, is it the Shabbat? There's a Shabbat, and then there is a high Shabbat, a day afterwards. How does that work out? So, the way you can figure this out is that every, if you go, if you've been in the uh, feasts for a while, or if you've been studying them, and you look through the calendars, that every feast does not end up after a Shabbat, like this one did. This one went from Shabbat into the Feast of Unleavened Bread, or at the ending of it, we had Shabbat, and then on the Sunday, which would be first day, ended up on the last day of it, which was the final high Shabbat. So, but every every feast, every year is not going to end up after a Shabbat. So, therefore, when it says after the Shabbat, it means the High Shabbat, which was the feast day, which we will start beginning our counting on. We will begin our counting of the, fifty days tomorrow after. Right, the and high Shabbat. and so for those who don't understand what we were just talking about, we were discussing our rabbit hole ex, extravanza, extravaganza. extravaganza. Oh, man, I've been down to Spanish country too long. Um, yeah, and so we, we were discussing that, and a lot of people start the count after the Shabbat, the main Shabbat, and versus the high Shabbat, and that is that is incorrect as far as we can tell. And so everybody and their dog is on a different calendar, and um, we got to get our calendars right, and so I believe we have this right, and so for those of you out there joining us, we thank you guys very much. This is the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and you guys are our digital family. You guys are basically pulled up at a chair along with us, and we thank you guys so much for being our family, and there's so many of you guys out there that we pray for. Um, we love all of you guys. We love you as our neighbors, and we are fishing for men, and this is what we are doing, and, and there is a big list of 613 laws that it's actually been Judaized, and they're, they're not even 613 laws because there's a ton of laws that we cannot keep. What are some of the laws, Eli, that we cannot keep? Uh, the Levitical ones, the priest ones, we cannot do those. Why not? Why can't you go get an oxen and kill it? There's no priests anymore. Well, you could be, why not Why not go get an oxen yourself well, and you, kill it? Well, uh, you have to look at a few examples in the Bible where Nadab and Abihu, the sons of... The s Aaron? The Aaron. sons of Aaron. Well, uh, brought strange fire before y'all, right? They, they did something wrong with the sacrifice that was not according to what they should have done. They ended up getting burned alive for it. Strange so. fire. And so we are not qualified to be a Levitical. We're not trained in it. We're not, we don't even know if we are from that, that tribe. And so um, can those outside of the Levites be a priest in that regard? No. No. no it literally had to be bloodline Levites. You can enter Yisrael. Through, through being being grafted in, as people say, but you cannot enter into the Levitical priesthood because that is something that literally has to be bloodline related. Yes, and so that is not rain on our roof. That is actually our roof. Here in South America, we have, um, you don't really have like ceilings like you have like in normal places, at least not in our pad. And so it is a tin roof and it is about 20 some feet above us possibly. And as the sun comes out and goes away, it sounds like this and it's just it comes alive and so this is our alive roof all right let's do a quick breakdown of where we are at we have gone through these before but it's been a while since we've done this so i will i will roll through these very first one um actually Cade, what's the first one be fruitful jade 
Multiply. Eli. Replenish the earth. Okay. Or subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living thing. Have dominion over all living creatures. The earth bearing and every tree is for food. I'm messing these guys up. I'm doing this this wheel of He's spinning verses. it so it's like upside down yeah. and backwards. <laughs> man, man and, and woman, woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you, except for things that are outside of Leviticus 11. Again, we must study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Like, you can't take this and go, okay, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, and then you go put grandpa in a stew pot and eat him, because that, that's not it. Don't eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Why is that a good idea, boys? Uh, so your children don't grow up and be a bunch of uh, raging Gentiles and end yeah, up yelling when they're done. I don't want to take you outside the, the gates, right? And yeah. beat you guys up. Okay. <laughs> Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover. And in that, there are a whole bunch of sub-statutes that uh, you would do. And if you keep the Passover, then you would want to keep A through N... We also have, and these are all the verses with it, keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And what is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, gents? That's the feast where you don't eat leavened when bread. When have we seen this feast? Like two months ago. Two months ago, yeah. Right, and it began, uh, what? What did this begin? This began our, uh, kind of our, the year, right? The year began, we began, began the, our the holy appointed cycles. time cycles, yeah, right? Right, right. It began yeah. our own account as well. Passover. Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread. There is one Torah for the stranger and for the Ebrahim. Eli, what does that mean? There's one Torah for the stranger and the Hebrew. Like, everyone follows the same Torah. Okay, right? if you're a Gentile, is there a Torah for a Gentile? Yes, it is the Torah for the Israelites. There is no house of Gentile. They never said that in the Bible. There's no, it's the house of Yashorel. Yeah. And if you want to be a person of Yah, you are to be the house of Yashorel, not the house of Gentile. Yeah, but there's a whole tremendous amount. In fact, you guys can look at the last video I did. I did one, and I have, I have super Gentiles that are attacking me, and... Um, we either I don't have any other word for them other than we don't mean it in like a disrespectful way. That's just what they were referred to in the Bible when they were outside of the Torah was the Gentiles. Yeah, and we have ones that are like super ones that are like very proud of eating pork, very proud of not keeping the laws of God, very, very proud of not being Israelite. Yeah, very proud. I mean, they laugh at us and they scoff at us, and and that is you know that is that is an honor, a badge of honor because our Messiah Yahushua said that he said you know if they hated me, they're absolutely going to hate you, and they hate the laws of God, and I guess some of the arguments were um, is that it wasn't too, we're not we're not 2,000 years ago and it was actually longer than that we weren't you know uh, 3,000 years ago uh, we weren't with Moshe or do, do, do we're reborn under the laws of Moshe were, were some of the things it said it should have been it should have been I would have I would have been happy with that I think hopefully I wouldn't have been stiff necked back in the day but um, that is that is one of the, the commands is there is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim which is it was just Hebrew um, sanctify all the firstborn to Yahuwah. And we actually get into that a little bit more in Leviticus? Numbers. Numbers. And um, I don't know so much as if this is going to be a command. Um, some of these we're going to have to do. Um, we were, we could not remember this one and we did not recall, but we had one of our dear sisters, Adiel, and she says where it is a little bit further in there. And so we were trying to figure it out. How do we sanctify it? And I didn't know if I needed to take my kid out and shave his hair or something or not shave his hair. I didn't know what I should do then. But it, it, it has to do, I believe, with a Levitical priesthood. And so commandment 19 may disappear because we're only trying to keep the commandments of things that we can absolutely keep. Okay, who can give me a rundown of exactly where we are at to this point in Exodus 15. Where have we been? We had creation. So we started with creation. We had fallen. Come, the angels come down. They uh, created Nephilim, monsters, uh, giants. And then we had a flood. And then we had uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem had his children. And then we had Abraham. And he uh, had his son Isaac. And Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. And they uh, he sold their little brother Joseph into slavery. They, uh, he became ruler of Egypt, he moved his whole family down to Egypt, and they got stuck in Egypt as slaves for 400 years, and now they are de they have departed and just got away from Pharaoh. All right, and who's Moshe, exactly? Moses. Well, he's, who uh, is he's from the tribe of Levi. He was one of the sons of the uh, son of Levi, so he's the great-grandson of Levi. 
Is he a folk hero to you guys? Yeah. Moshe? Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys, who, okay, so when you guys make the Shimaim or the kingdom, who's the first one besides Messiah? Who are you going to want to go meet? Mm. I'd like to I, meet I think David. E honestly, David. Honestly, Enoch. Da Eli wants to, to see David. You, Enoch, I need, Cade I need, wants I need, to see I, Enoch. Some things I need to know. <laughs> Jade? Uh, there are a few of them. Maybe Samson. Samson's definitely cool. I would like to meet Samson. Nicole, you got anyone? Eve. Eve, she wants to see Eve. Oh, you want to? I want to talk to her. Oh, you you want a one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's let's talk about birthing pains and all of this other stuff that the poor women what fall under. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> Why did you consult your man right out of the gate? You guys should have had a quorum. Okay. All right. So here we are. We are looking for Commandment Twenty, and our roof is singing to us. And let us begin with this. Wait a minute. Who did yes. you want to talk to? Who would I want to talk to? That is a good question. I, you know, there are. Um, you know, I don't know. I was I was reading I, Ezra and Nehemiah. Both seem really really cool. I, I I like I like I like Ezra and Nehemiah. Both of them put hands on people. Both of them rip their beards out. Both of them rip their hair out and sit in sackcloth, and they're they're broken, right? They they sit there and see the sin of Yisrael, and, and they sit there in wonderment to the end of the day, right? They 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 just sit, and I can I can just imagine myself sitting in in this just crying like. You know, I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I, I would like to probably meet the Packham. I might want to meet Paul. I might want to put, I, not, I don't want to say I want to put hands on Paul, but I would like to talk to Paul and ask him what in the world was he talking about. And is most of the books that they say aren't written by Paul, like the historians, as a side note, historians that actually read the original writings that they are a tribute to Brother Shaul, they say more than half of them are not the same author. And so back in the day, if your name was, I don't know, Zabadiah or something, and you wanted to write something, nobody's going to read anything by Zabadiah, right? But if you have Brother Shawl out there and you write as Brother Shawl, you're going to have a whole bunch of people that are probably more willing to listen to what you write than, than something of that. And so thank you, Nicole. That I, I don't have a real good answer. I mean, I, I really want to high five a lot of these guys. Um, I think Aaron would be cool. I know he doesn't get a lot of props, but that dude had to... Um, he had to have been something special where he was able to be what he was. And in Moshe, for, for, for real, I mean, what, what dude is uh, more convicted about his own people than, I mean, than Moshe? I mean, the, bro the brothers of the, the brothers of Yashrael, right? The sons of Yashrael would be pretty cool to me as well, right? They oh, the crazy ones? They dude, they're, they're a little wild. I mean, I, they all went through some stuff. I'm sure they're all too. Dude, that's a band of wild, wild dudes right there. So, all right, Exodus 15, let's begin. Then sang Moshe and the children of Yashrael this song unto Yahuwah and spoke, saying, I will sing unto Yahuwah, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my Yeshua. He is my El, and I will prepare him a habitation, my father's Eloi, and I will exalt him. And I'm stopping on that word Yeshua again because um, that is the name of our Messiah, right? And in Hebrew, what does that mean, Eli? Salvation. Salvation, right. And so when Yah is his salvation is what Moshe is saying. Yahuwah is a man of war. Yahuwah is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host has he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, is become glorious in power. Your right hand, O oh, Yahuwah, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellency, you have overthrown them that rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with a blast of your nostrils, the, water were, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright at, as a heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. What does your say? Congealed? Depths were? The depths became stiff in the heart of the sea. So I guess it's congealed. congealed I've heard that. And the boys are, are reading out of the Hallelujah Scriptures, and I'm reading out of the Sefer. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your ruach, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Yahuwah, among the Elohim? Okay, le okay, let me finish that verse and let's talk about this lowercase Elohim. Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Okay, this Elohim right here in mine is not capitalized. What does your guys say? Mighty ones. Mighty ones. Okay, so that is a the difference. There is only one Elohim most high. 
the 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 capital E, um, the, and usually it's in bold in this, but there are other Elohim's. What are some other Elohim's? Like the, the, the idols, the uh, Mitrites, the Egyptians, right? They all have their sphinxes. They all have their stuff. They were around false gods their entire lives. Yeah, so they all they have... had a raw and they had a whole bunch of sun gods and a bunch of crazy things in <laughs> Egypt, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, and that's lowercase Elohim. So they're, they're it's basically saying mighty ones. All right, twelve. You stretch out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You and your mercy have led forth the people which you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength unto your holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm, they shall be as still as stone. Till your people pass over, O Yahuwah, till the people pass over which you have purchased, you shall bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Adonai, which you have made for you to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Yahuwah, which your hands have established. Yahuwah shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and Yahuwah brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Yashrael went on dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to Yahuwah, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. So Moshe brought Yashrael from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Merah, they were not they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moshe, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto El Yahuwah, and Yahuwah showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters. Oh, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohekim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and guard all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought un upon the Mitzrayim. For I am Yahuwah Ropa. 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 Ka. What does your guys say? Yahuwah who kills you. Yahuwah who kills you. Heals you. Heals you. Heals you. Oh, oh, geez. Well, that's it. He brings the diseases. Okay. So Yahuwah who heals you. And they came to Elim, where, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Okay, so um, I know I discussed this previously with you guys, and you guys said there's no commandments in this, but that almost sounds like a commandment on 26. Let's read it. And said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohekim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and guard all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Mitzrayim, for I am Yahuwah that heals you. Ropaka. Let me see how they actually say this. Uh, I guess it doesn't pop up. Okay, does anyone anyone seeing a command here? Uh, guard my commands is what we... Jade, I see a shake of the head. Doesn't I like... don't think so. I think it's more like uh, this is Moses telling people, like, like, this won't happen to you guys if you follow the commands, which doesn't give them all the commands yet. But he's given them some of them. But, he's like, but would that apply to you? Absolutely. I mean, if if you diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohekim, will he do, and, and you do what is right in his sight, and you give ear to his commandments. See, this doesn't say just to a certain amount. I mean, this is, this is it. If you will listen to what the commandments, and you will guard his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Mitzrayim, for I am Yahuwah Rophiah. I feel like it should almost be under that other category of like guard my commands. I feel like that should be under that. I I can agree that that I can agree that it is is one of these things that it, we could be like the I guess the Jews who have uh, you know the six hundred thirteen and they add you know five commandments for one single one. But um, yeah, so I believe this should be under. I believe this should be under guard. Teach your children. Where are we at? Guard Yahuwah's covenant. So this is what we have for commandment 12 is guard Yahuwah's covenant. 
And Elohim said unto Elavram, You shall guard my covenant, therefore you and your seed after you in their generations. Is anyone with me? Is anyone yeah, in agreement? Yeah, yeah, or am yeah, I yeah. just yeah. making this up? No, because it does. It says online, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah, your Elohim, and so, will do what is right in his sight. So th we have guard Yahuwah's covenant in, as that commandment. But this is a little bit different because I guess a covenant. What is what is Yahuwah's covenant, Cade? The Torah he bonded with the people. What is the that is not what I'm looking for. What is the very first covenant? Covenant. Um, what is the what is in the in the uh, apartment rental agreement? To, uh, if you will keep my laws, statutes, he and will commands, be, he will be your Elohim. I will be your Elohim. You will be my people. That was it. That was basically the covenant. And so, um, this I believe that we should it should be somewhere in there up up into this. And is it guard his covenant? I guess that would be his covenant because his covenant does. Um, it's his commands, his law, statutes, and commands. Okay, so Eli will add this one. So we don't actually have a new commandment because it is the same commandment, but we have more verses that will go down inside of that. And I believe that Eli is doing that as we speak. All right, so we will continue on that. Um, I believe that is important. I mean, every time that we hear that, we should we should guard the, the commandments. And maybe, I don't know, maybe put a times two or something under the covenant on, on our thing. Did you add that in there, Eli? Yeah. Okay, so... Eli added this in, and I guess I have to refresh it, and it's no love. So, 16, 12. 12. Yeah, it didn't update it. So, that's okay. It updated on Eli's. We will continue on, and we will see these many more times. All right. Let's head in to Exodus 16. And they took their journey from Elium, and all the assembly of the children of Yashrael came into the wilderness of Sin which is between Eliam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Mitzrayim. And the whole assembly of the children of Yashrael murmured against Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Yashrael said unto them, Would to Elohim we have died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzrayim when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full? For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Yahuwah, then said Yahuwah unto Moshe, Behold, I will rain bread from the heavens for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my Torah or no. Big, big thing right here. I don't, I don't think there's a command. It's but not this, a command for us. But it's not, it's not a command for us, but it is a... a um, just an observance into the how Yahuwah thinks, right? And so he basically said, "Look, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna bring down bread, and we're gonna test them, and we're gonna see if they walk in my Torah or no." And so this is something that is crazy, right? A lot of people don't believe that these commands are for us or anywhere near us, and so they refuse the law, statutes, and commands of Yah, and. He may just be proving us. He may just be testing us. Okay, um, you know, your life is in disarray. Everything has gone, everything has gone to pot, as they say. And um, it's, you know, what you, you cry out to Yah, you cry out to God, and most people don't. And they say, hey, please fix this. And he fixes it. And he fixes your issue just to see something, just to see if you will say, oh, okay, well, obviously this was the hand of God that inter intervened in my life. And this is obviously, I didn't have this. I was crying out to God. Now I have it. Will these people actually understand that there is more than a simple prayer and, and, and there's, a, there's a way and there's a walk. And so this is very important that we understand this. Verse five, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare it that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moshe and Aaron said unto all the children of Yashrael, At evening, then ye shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out from the land of Mitzrayim. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of Yahuwah. For he that hears your murmurings against Yahuwah, and what, we, what are we that, we that ye murmur against us? And Moshe said, This shall be when Yahuwah shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that Yahuwah hears your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. And Moshe spoke unto El Aaron, say unto all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, Come near before Yahuwah, for he has heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spoke unto the whole assembly of the children of Yashrael, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, 
I have heard the murmurings of the children of Yashrael. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah Elohekim. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone, behold, upon the face of the wilderness they lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. What does your guys say? Hoar frost? Fine as frost. What is it? Fine, fine as, as frost. frost. Fine as frost. Okay, so hoar, H-O-A-R, means fine. Okay. And when the children of Yashrael saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they knew not what it was. And Moshe said unto them, This is the bread which Yahuwah has given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. An omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Yashrael did so and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Okay, what does that mean? How, how is that possible? So how's, is this magical bread they have? Because if they gather too much, they had nothing over. If they gather too little, they lack nothing. What, what are we, what I are think we it's seeing? The power everyone of was hungry, man. Everyone, everyone ate. Everyone was full. It just, Yah filled them up until they were full. And it just, so you know, was, it, was it a magic? Was it a, uh, some sort of heavenly magical bread that created enough? Or were people just content with the bread? I think it's the hand of Yah filling, giving them as much as they needed until they were full. Interesting. All right, and Moshe said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moshe, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moshe was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the assembly came and told Moshe. Now, Nicole, what... What is possible that would melt in the sun? How is this? What are we talking like flour? Are we talking butter? Are we talking what? What is it that is a, a flour? Because an omer is an omer is how much? It says right here at the end of this thing. It says an omer is one tenth of an ephah. And one tenth. It's like a pint. It's a pint, and so everybody had an omer, and it melted in the hot sun. So basically, it rained down bread. When the sun came out, it melted it. So. It's like almost like a, I've never seen you know, those sugar candies that get hot in the sun, and the ones in the wrappers, they all melt away. It's almost mm -hmm. like something like, like of that sugar? base, yeah. Like sugar. Some people say it's like angel bread. I think it's described somewhere else as, as the bread of angels. They must I be don't know. Well. Yeah, I don't know if angels eat or not, but yeah, they must be eating well. Okay, and and it came to pass. Okay, uh, two omers. Okay, and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the assembly came and told Moshe. And he said unto them, That is that, this is that which Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy, of the holy, holy Shabbat unto Yahuwah. And I just popped this up, Shabbat, it's Shabbat. In, intermission is what it says it is. The Shabbat, the seventh day of the week, the appointed times and the feast of Yahuwah, hence the high Shabbat. Um, I don't know if this is a high Shabbat. This is an actual high Shabbat. I don't know what that means there, but this is not that it is that they're talking about is not a high Shabbat. So he said, This is that which Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy, holy Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that which ye will seethe, and that which remains over lay up for you to be kept until morning. Nicole, Nicole what is seething? It just says cook. Boil. Boil? Okay. I didn't know what that was. Okay, so you would cook. So basically, it tells us we're getting some instructions for a day of Shabbat. Well, it's like that's command for us because that's what we can do. We can cook our meals before. All right, so let's look at that. So, and it came to pass on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, two omers for one. And he said unto them, This is that which Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is the rest of, of the holy, holy Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Bake that which ye will bake today, seed that ye will seed, and that which remains over lay up for you to be kept until morning. Okay, I need everyone's here, everyone thinking. I think yeah. so. I would think that's kind of a command because that's what we had to do for Shabbat. Did we get any Shabbat commands before this? Because this is like the first Shabbat command I think we had in this entire thing. 
Uh, we yeah, we don't know anything except that Yah rested on the Shabbat. So by here, he's telling all the people to rest on the Shabbat. So back up to sixteen. Back up to sixteen. The Lord is commanded. Oh. Let every man gather. This is the thing that Yahweh has commanded. Gather of every man according to his eating, and Omer for every person according to the number of your person. Yeah, okay. we don't have manna anymore. Right? right, but if you're going to gather up, you would want to go to the store and you would want to buy, gather, uh, our day of gathering, something of that sort. All right, quorum of the five of us, let's figure this out. So this is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. So they are talking about manna, right? They are talking about manna, but it is also talking about it is the same stuff for us. I do believe we get into Sabbath commandments. Um, in t- at 20, I think. I think it's here in 20. just a bit. Um, so if anything, this would go under our Sabbath command. Right, this would be like honor the Sabbath day. Like that. Um, and we don't have that yet, but I do not want to miss these commands. We should mark those down. This is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. I do believe that is talking about manna, right? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, but I mean, at the same time, we must study to show ourselves approved unto Yah, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So this would be part of our Shabbat is that we do need to go to the store or we do need to prepare. We do right. need to have this prior to the Shabbat. Already but this isn't for the Shabbat here. This was just for when it came down and he says, all right, here's your food. Get what you want and don't take any more. Time out here. He's talking about verse 16. Pr- right. I'm, I, I know. this. It's We're still prepping, though, for a, a Shabbat. Right. So maybe this isn't a commandment. Maybe we will come back to this here. I'll highlight this one. We'll come back to this one when we have our Sabbath command. And um, under Sabbath, we will add this. Um, now, back to 20, where are we at? 23. 23. Um, and he said unto them, and thank you very much for everybody who's, who's in on this. Um, this is that which Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Bake that which ye sh- will bake today and see that which you will see. And that which remains over lay up for you to be kept until morning. Um so, well, there, there's, um, yeah, we would have to bake, right? We cannot cook. We cannot cling. We're not doing survival work. We're not doing any of that stuff on a Shabbat because we know that. Um, we know that we should bake the day before, which we do on preparation day, which is the uh, Friday on the Gregorian calendar. Um, so I think this should be under the Shabbat as well. But it's it's not a direct command to us right now. But it is more of a adjective or a filler, a description word for the whole thing for us. So when we get into that, Exodus 20, we will go and put these under this for the Shabbat. And then that way we have a full list of the commandments. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Yep. Everyone with me? Yep. All agreement? Mm-hmm. Everyone yep. say, hey, we're here. Hey. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we're on. Okay, so here we are. Lay it up to be kept until morning 24. And they laid it up until morning, laid it up till the morning as Moshe bade, and it did not stink. Neither was there any worm therein. So we're back to the magical stuff that doesn't it fall under the same properties. So like the Shabbat day, time stands still for the manna or something of the sort. So it's very interesting. And Moshe said, eat that today, for today is the Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Today ye shall not... Today ye shall not find it in the field. So no man on the, on the seventh day. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Shabbat, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. You know, there's always those guys. There's always that guy. Or there's always those people. Command breakers. They just can't get it together, right? And so they're probably hungry and... Um, you know, I, that would be crazy, you know, really, really crazy being those guys out in the field when everybody else isn't this world that we're living in, everybody's out on Shabbat, right? That's the day that everybody, you get done with the week, you go on a Shabbat, you're always buying, selling, uh, your entire Saturday is the day that's, they've made the day of pleasure. And then they've taken the first day, which is the Sunday, uh, on the Gregorian calendar, and they, they worship on the wrong day. And somehow they're in covenant, and the Holy Spirit has them covered, and they're all good. Okay. 28. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, 
How long refuse, refuse ye to guard my commandments and my Torah? And Moshe goes, oh, yeah, these guys. See for that Yahuwah has given you the Shabbat. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Now that right there, that feels like part of the commands that we need to add under under the, yeah, the yeah, commandments, like, right? Stay home. Saturday. Because, I mean, the, the Christians, they'll drive their cars. They'll drive 40, 50 miles or something to go to church as they... Then the preacher will pass the plate, right? The, the, the How they get money in the churches is on Sunday, right? And that would be against the Torah, right? You shouldn't be taking, you shouldn't be paying and, and, and buying on, on the Shabbat. Even even tithes, I don't believe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But it doesn't seem like it. Okay, so we will add that. There's three sub-commands under the Exodus 20 commandment that we're going to So the people rested on the seventh day. Yay, hallelujah, finally. And the house of Yashriel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. That sounds awesome. And Moshe said, this is the one thing which Yahuwah commands. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said unto El Elrom, take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein and lay it up before Yahuwah to be kept for your generations. So there's a bowl of manna somewhere. There's a bowl, and there's an ark, there's a rod of Aaron's... Almost seems like it's like sourdough. Sourdough? Starter. <laughs> well, what exactly is coriander seed? Can you tell us? Uh, it's just an herb. Just an herb? Yeah. Uh, is it good? Has anyone eaten uh, coriander seed? Like, I think it's like cilantro. Cilantro? Maybe. Okay, I'm sure some of you guys out there know we, we don't, I guess. Okay, 32. And Moshe said, this is the thing which Yahuwah commands. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generation. I already read this. Is nobody helping me here? It's around 33. <laughs> We're on 34 All right. now. All right, going on. And Moshe said, 33. And Moshe said unto Elrond, take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein and lay it up before Yahuwah to be kept for your generations as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So Elrond laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Yashrael did eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is one-tenth of an ephah. Does anyone know how much an ephah is? Hold on, I might stand in the back of the... Yeah, we'll, uh, an ephah... Measurement chart. Is... We're is, looking. Ephah is... 23.3 quarts or 22 liters. All right, so 22 liters is an ephah, and 22 liters seems but like an quite omer, a bit. But an omer is 2.2 2 liters, or 2.3 quarts is what an omer is. And what was the so next that, one? Oh, okay. So an omer is what? Uh, One-tenth of an ephah. One-tenth of an ephah, and an ephah is how 2. much? 2.3 quarts. An ephah is 23.3 quarts, and or 22 liters. That's quite a bit, isn't it? A quart? But the omer, when they were taking out omers of it, they were taking... 2.3 quarts. So how big is that, Nicole? Think she just ran off to the kitchen. Okay, um, we don't know exactly. Uh, it's it's not a, it's not a tremendous amount, but it's enough that fills the people. A quart is four cups. We think from our kitchen four over cups there. Cups enough to feed a person for the day. Four cups of a fat of a flour of a, a fine because you could take the man and ground this stuff up. Right. It? It became like so it became ingredients. like it became bread flour that was already flavored. It already had sweetener to it. All right, so we're gonna do one more chapter here. And um, then we're actually, you guys are going to get two of this today because we're going to go back. We have a little bit of time today at Shavuot. We're, we're doing nothing but reading commandments, reading the Bible anyway, so we figured we'd read it with you. All right, let's continue on. Anyone know the commandments in 17? Um, hold on. You, so, I feel like there was one. Sorry. Yep. Two cups is, or two quarts is eight cups. So two quarts is eight cups. And one quart is four cups. And one quart is four cups. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So it's not, how big is it? Exactly. So if we're doing... If I, if I had one omer, how much is that for me? It is eight cups. Eight cups? That's one day of food. Eight cups of it, and you probably, you're probably you probably not going to eat that stuff straight. Maybe you would. I don't know. I oh, it tastes like honey, so... It's going to be pretty it's awesome. Pretty good. The kids are probably all out there eating the man yeah, off so the it's ground. Like, it's like they candy. Made bread out of it. Right. Yeah, no, they, like they cakes did. Cakes and stuff. Cakes so. and... Yeah, that's awesome. Yaz, yaz bread. Okay. Let's continue on. Uh, Shemot, Exodus 17. And all the assembly of the children of Yashrael journeyed from the wilderness of Sin 
for real, the wilderness of sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of Yahuwah, and pitch in Rephidim. What is Rephidim? Uh, Rephidim. Yeah. The Rephidim, yeah. It's not the, good, it's not the good ones. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moshe, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moshe said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt Yahuwah? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moshe and said, Wherefore is this that you have brought us up out of Mitzrayim to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moshe took a rod and beat them all up. No, wait. Yeah, he should have. He should have. He didn't. And Moshe cried unto Eliyahu, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go on before the people and take with you of the elders of Yashrael and your rod, wherewith you smote the river, take in your hand and go. Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Korev, and you shall smite the rock, and there shall water come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Yashrael. And he called the name of the place Maka and Merivah, because of the chiding of the children of Yashrael, and because they tempted Yahuwah, saying, Is Yahuwah among us or not? Then came Amalek and fought with Yashrael in the Rephidim. And Moshe said unto El Yahushua, yeah, yeah, Joshua. yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, sure. So Moshe said unto El Yahusha, and this is again, this is the name, this is the son of Nun, this is the, the son of Nun, not Nun, the parents, but the son's name, were, no, the parents' name were Nun. <laughs> Choose us out, men, and go forth. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim in my hand. So Yahushua, Yahusha did as Moshe had said to them to him and fought with Amalek and Moshe, Aaron and Kur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moshe held up his hand that Yashrael prevailed and when he let it down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moshe's hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and sat thereon, thereon and Aaron and Kur stayed up with his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Okay, what's this all about? Anyone? I, I, it's just wild. It's right? Just wild. Why Why does Yah want Moshe's hands in the air? I think it's a test. A test of uh, faith. A test of anything. Test of will. How long can you guys put your hand in the air? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Oh. I don't know how long he was holding up before he got tired. No, you, you guys will be, uh, you guys will have want your hands down very quickly. But every time he put his hands down, his people got smoted, right? Yeah, so can you imagine that? He puts it down for a second, and all of a sudden Joshua, the beatings begin. Joshua, so please, Moses. <laughs> Moses, put your hands up. We're getting owned. Hands up, boy. All right. So here we go. Um, where are we at? We are on 12, 14, 13. 13. And, and Yahusha discomfited Amlak and his people with the edge of the sword. They just said he defeated him. Yeah, mind. discomfited, defeated that, Amlak, I like disabled. I thought like discomfited is not the right word for Dis this. Discomfited, disabled, uh, defeated, defeated Amlak and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Write this for a memorial and a sefer and rehearse it in the ears of Yahushua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amlak from under the heavens. And Moshe built an altar and called the name of it Yahuwah Nisi. For he said, because Yah has sworn that Yahuwah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And now if you guys can hear it, it is actually raining. So we actually hit this right in the nick of time. And this is what we are trying to avoid. And so I hope we can have another one of these today. If the rain stops, we are going to study up on the next couple of chapters and read them with you. Um, it's about to get noisy, everybody. So, um, gentlemen, I appreciate your uh Attention, Nicole, thank you very much for joining this table. Everybody who's out there, thank you guys very, very, very much for spending this time. We know that there's a lot of things you could be doing here, and uh, probably the most important thing you could ever be doing is studying the word of our creator. Eli, what departing words do you have for us? Um, read your Bibles. Anything else? Um, follow the Torah. The Torah. Yeah, uh, follow the commands so you don't get plagued like the Mitzrites did. Yeah, there's a promise you won't do it if you follow his commands. Yeah, and, and your life will be better. I mean, it, you you may not be rich. You may not be, uh, uh, you know, have a complete happiness in everything. But the happiness is in our creator. The happiness is in doing his will. And you do not have a guilty conscience because you're acting like a super heathen, super Gentile, right? All right, guys. Thank you guys very, very, very much, everybody. Um, I guess that is it. Anyone have any final words? Read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. It All seems right. like the consensus. All right, everybody. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.